Yeah, hi everyone. So good evening. Now I'll be discussing few important uh, uh, recent advances which are not covered in basic MCQ books but which are very important in examination point of view. Okay, I have seen many questions either in the AIMS or either in the NEET. Uh, I, I don't know why the papers it is, they really love to ask these recent modifications. So we'll be covering one or two recent modifications which are very important in examination point of view. I'll be discussing uh, questions relevant to these uh, important aspects also. So going in detail, so uh, uh, what is it like? What is the treatment plan for the uh, necrotic teeth? So the treatment plan for the necrotic teeth, traditional endodontics generally goes with it. It is based upon the open apex or closed apex. Whether it is apex is matured or whether apex is closed. For, for example, if it is like immature. And it is necrotic so there is no chance for the apexogenesis to take place so the treatment plan is apexification whereas for the mature apex you can go for a regular root canal treatment right so th that is what for the traditional endodontics is going and majority of your questions will be on the traditional endodontic side but the major disadvantage of this apexification because apexification does not lead to thickening of the dentinal walls it may create an apical barrier where your gp or your uh, root canal filling material can be condensed but it does not increase the thickness of the dentinal walls of an immature teeth which is the major disadvantage of traditional endodontics but now the trend has moved towards the regenerative endodontics the regenerative endodontics helps in increasing the thickness of the dentinal wall helps in increasing the strength of the teeth and prevents the fracture right so if it is immature apex you can go for a revascularization procedure if it is a matured apex in majority of time we'll go with the traditional endodontics but there are few other things where the pulp can be regenerated there are the stem cell therapy there are the pulp implantation there are the scaffold implant gene therapy there are many other things by which you can continue the deposition of the dentin you can continue the deposition of the dentin around the root walls by increasing the thickness of the root walls you can increase the fracture resistance of a particular teeth so that's what the re uh, regenerative endodontics is more concerned about and you can see many questions like towards the regenerative endodontics and the best treatment option for an open apex is revascularization it's not like apexification we regularly go for apexification as an answer according to many mcq books but now the best treatment option will be revascularization it's not apexification you find revascularization as an option go for revascularization. The second best option can be apexification. So of course you know that the golden standard material for the apexification or for apexogenesis long back that is called as a golden standard is your calcium hydroxide. <coughs> okay but nowadays they are not using calcium hydroxide it is a golden standard. So if a question is asked what is the golden standard material for apexification or apexogenesis or for direct pulp capping you can directly go for the calcium hydroxide as an answer but now the trend moves towards the MTA. MTA is an alternative uh, material of choice to increase the dentin heart tissue barrier at the apex. Uh, you, can, you can use MTA which has excellent sealing properties. And the main disadvantage associated with this is the remaining dentinal thickness wall failure to induce the uh, root development. This is an exception case, but you need to make a note because they can ask you a question. So now is all about the regeneration. Uh, I have already discussed how the regeneration uh, is important and uh, and which option you need to go for when you find a uh, question like a necrotic open apex case. What is the best treatment option? Is regeneration, which is nothing but to regrow. So uh, for this regeneration, you need to learn a basic stuff about okay, PRP, okay, uh, protein rich plasma, uh, which can be categorized into four types. There are pure protein rich plasma that is PRP, leukocyte protein rich plasma that is LPRP, and pure protein rich fibrin that is uh, PPRF and leukocyte fibrin rich fiber. Okay, so these are the four aspects that you have to make a note okay and how this is collected okay and uh, it's very simple you need to collect the blood from the patient and you need to keep in the uh, tube so that the, because of the difference in the specific gravity or the density uh, there will be differentiation of this RBC WBC and plasma and the platelet cells so how the case selection should be it's a simple chart 
which is very important and majority of the papers it is mostly they will ask question on this flow chart that's all so we'll be learning each and every line that is given in this flow chart first is about the case selection the case selection was already discussed tooth with necrotic pulp and an immature apex is the best option the second important aspect is the pulp space which does not need any post and core or pulp space which does not need any final restoration grossly decayed is not is contraindicated for this regeneration procedure and the next one is the cooperation of the patient and the parent because they need to come for the follow-ups they need to come for the second visit so there should be a good cooperation from the patients as well as from the parents okay so and the fourth aspect is the patient should not be allergic to the medications and the antibiotics that are necessary to complete the procedure there are few aspects which are very important few material which are very important for the regeneration procedure and the patient should not be allergic to these so these are must included factors for the case selection the first appointment what you need to do is give local anesthesia apply rubber dam open the axis uh, irrigate uh, remove the pulp and irrigate the uh, i mean necrotic pulp and remove uh, remove all the remove with the irrigation solution that's 20 ml of naocl uh, that is given okay uh, 1.5 percent is 20 ml per canal <coughs> for five minutes so once you're done with this drive with the power points place calcium hydroxide either you can place calcium hydroxide or either you can place a low concentration of triple antibiotic paste sealed with dentin bonding agent the main intention of keeping a dentin bonding agent because minocycline is the one that's going to cause the discoloration of the teeth right you know you know the tetracyclines are going to cause discoloration as the triple antibiotic paste is a combination of one is to one is to one ratio of ciprofloxacin metronidazole and minocycline to a concentration of 0.1 milligrams per ml it's going to cause the minocycline ingredient which is going to cause the discoloration of the teeth so to prevent the discoloration you need to seal the pulp chamber with dentin bonding gauge and so that the minocycline will not move above the cement enamel junction and cause discoloration of the teeth that's the main intention of keeping the dentin bonding gauge and it's an mcq again why dentin bonding should be applied when you're using triple antibiotic paste the answer is it is due to the discoloration that is caused by minocycline so once you're done with this you need to seal with three to four mm of a temporary restorative material and make a note cavit or any temporary restorative material should have a minimum thickness of 3.5 millimeters to prevent the micro leakage okay so it, it should be 3.5 the ideal answer is 3.5 ranges from 3 to 4 millimeters that's not again an mcq so this is what we do in the first appointment second appointment is done after one to four weeks after the first visit access to the initial treatment any response and in the second appointment you will go with three percent as mupivacaine without vasoconstrictor the main reason of going without vasoconstrictor is you know what are the uses of adding a vasoconstrictor to la you know what are the uses of adding a vasoconstrictor to la so it prevents the systemic toxicity it it decreases the blood flow uh, it, it it increases the activity of logistic at a particular drug so here we are a, we are planning to induce bleeding so we want bleeding so bleed bleed if we want bleeding there shouldn't be no vasoconstrictor so that's the reason why we lose three percentage of mupivacaine without vasoconstrictor they can ask you a question why three percentage of mupivacaine without a vasoconstrictor is used while you're going for the regenerative procedures because we need blood supply so we don't want any vasoconstrictor to stop stop the blood supply so that's a perfect answer so then you need to use 20 ml of 17 percentage of edda why why 20 percentage 20 ml of 17 percentage of edta is used at particularly in regenerative procedures because edta has some growth factors which aggravate the periapical cells to produce the dentin <laughs> okay that's the reason so drive with paper points and create over instrumentation you need to create over instrumentation for example if the working length is 20 you need to go for 22 and you need to do over instrumentation and induce bleeding so the bleeding will come into the open pulp ch open chamber and it should be filled at least to allow three to four millimeters of restorative material and place an absorbent matrix over the uh, blood clot of the necessary and then go with an mta and followed by uh, you need to you need to you need to fill with the calcium hydroxide then you need to go for the follow-up the follow-up can be either two follow-ups that is the clinical examination and radiographical examination clinical examination is simple that if there is no pain no swelling no sinus tract the treatment is successful 
and after a few days the pulp can be regenerated it may show a positive pulpal response whereas coming to the radiographic signs there will be decreasing in the radiolucency that is the periapical radiolucency can be decreased if the dentinal thickening is increased so there will be increasing in the width of the root walls they can be increasing in the root length too okay so these are the uh, uh, these are the follow-up aspects that you have to check both clinically as radiographically so that's what uh, the regenerative topic is about uh, i feel like these are the aspects that they may ask you because i mean according to me it is not a level of uc student but nowadays the paper setters they love to ask question on regeneration so just just go ahead with this video this video is going to cover different different important aspects uh, which are very important to answer few pedo and endo related questions thank you all signing off dr shrikant